Hi, everyone. I thought I would do something a little bit different today and share the story of a painting. So I recently completed a painting called The Warrior for Truth. And she had a really interesting story, or I think it's an interesting story. So I thought I would take a moment and share how she came to be. And uh, when I start a painting, often what I do is it starts with just a mess, honestly. And, you know, who's to say halfway through, it's still not a mess, but that's what I do. I play. And this particular painting started on Thanksgiving Day. And Thanksgiving, as you as you may know, depending on where you live in the world, um, but also on your ancestry and how you feel about it has very different connotations. And Thanksgiving for me, I have a lot of mixed feelings about it because of the history of our country and how we treated Native peoples, um, how we still treat Native peoples. And also it's the, the holiday that was my mom's favorite and my mom's no longer with me. And so I really enjoy that holiday because of her and the joy and the memories that I have of spending that time with her. So it's, it's a mixed bag for me. It brings a lot of joy in that sense, but it also brings a lot of, um, not so joyous feelings. And so on that day in particular, I just really wanted to paint. And it started with a, a piece of watercolor paper and some inks. And I just went to town and created just this background. And what I found was as I created and let it dry and I continued to make some marks that I saw a face. And this often happens um, in my work. I will see images, I will see figures, I will see animals, and sometimes I go with it, and sometimes I don't, and they're just sort of there in the energy, in the underpainting. But this particular face wanted to come out. She wanted to be there. And it was really interesting to me because it was very dark, the shape that came out of this background was dark. I mean, the, the, the initial color was a very, very, very dark purple dioxazine purple is almost black. And I thought, okay, this is interesting. There's a dark undercurrent to this story. And I kind of took some light paint. You can see how I carved around where I saw that face sort of carved that out. And I, as I was looking at it and continued to work on it, I also noticed there were some circular shapes that sort of evolved, and that reminded me of flowers, especially the flowers that you see in um, Central American, Latin American um, sort of imagery, and and that's my my ancestry is um, is Mexican. I'm part part Mexican and Portuguese and all sorts of other things, but but that's a big part of my history, and so that kind of called to me into it. And I started to work on it, still keeping the darkness in the face. And there were these markings that had been mark making I had done in previous layers that I really, really felt strongly about and wanted to retain. So I sat with this painting for a long time. I started it in November of 2022 and I finished her in March of 2023. So I sat with it for a long time. And the more I looked at it, the more I felt like there was a story there. The fact that I painted it on Thanksgiving, the fact that she showed up the way that she did, the fact that I have these feelings about that holiday, um, what it means, the history of our country, and also the fact that I currently live in upstate New York, and I live on lands that were traditionally settled by the Mohawk tribe. And ever since we moved here a couple of years ago, I feel this really strong affinity to the native people that settled these lands. Like I can feel their presence, especially driving around um, and in certain places. It's like I can almost see myself or see images from the past of people living here. I feel this very strong affinity and attachment to that. And so this painting, I felt a very strong responsibility, sense of responsibility towards like there was a story there that needed to be told that wanted to be told. And I didn't know that I was the right person to tell it. I didn't know that I had permission to tell that story. Um, and, and so I sat with it and I didn't want to ruin it. I didn't want to mess it up. 
And um, so the way I resolve that kind of tension in my life uh, normally is to just not do anything, to ignore it, to move on to something. And it's out there and it's out there and it's out there. And um, what I do as part of my practice as an intuitive painter is I step into and connect with my paintings and I ask them what they want. I connect to the end result for what they want to become and follow through on that. And I remember connecting with this piece and her telling me, I, I want you to finish me. I want to be done. I want to be out in the world. I want to be seen. And so I was like, okay, I need to do it. I need to work on it. And so what I did is I started with those circular shapes and I turned them into flowers and I have this sort of love hate relationship with painting flowers. I love flowers. I love nature. I think they're beautiful. I love look at paintings of flowers and I don't really uh, like mine. <laughs> and during the month of February, if you're following me on my channel, you will know this. I did a challenge. It was a February flowers challenge. Um, and Anne Evanston, Amanda Evanston, forgive me if I got your first name wrong, created this challenge. And uh, it was great because what I did is I painted freaking flowers every single day for 28 days. And what that did is uh, it helped get me in the practice of painting every day, which is a wonderful reason for doing a challenge, especially a challenge that's longer than 21 days. They, they say it takes 21 days to make a habit. So that was good. The other thing it did is it gave me a lot of practice in painting flowers. And one of my takeaways from that was I now know what a Tracy flower looks like. And I'm okay with that. I used to judge myself for my flowers, not looking like other people's flowers. Oh, that's what flowers are supposed to look like. Well, I suck as a painter because that's not what mine look like. And so what I'm really learning to embrace on my journey right now is to embrace me and what makes me, me and stop comparing myself to other people. And it's impossible um, not to at some point, but to to not put my focus and energy on that is is really what I'm learning right now and learning what Tracy flowers are. And so I went with it. I, I took that and I just went to town and created these flowers. And I like to work with very limited palettes. So I uh, ended up picking three or four colors that the underpainting was far more colorful than, than this one. And I ended up with a piece that had these, these flowers on it. I really wanted this sense of them sort of melting into the background and sort of this drippage kind of thing, um, melting a little bit in the, in the space as well. But I really held off on her face and I just sort of skirted around it. I worked on the background. I worked on the flowers. There's an interesting part in the background in the upper left-hand corner where um, if you look, it almost looks like there's a man with a wolf headdress on that's there, which is pretty cool too. So I left that and um, just sort of let that be part of the story if that's something you see and uh, held off on the face. And I really wanted to keep the markings. I really wanted to keep that dark area across her eyes, that dark mark over her mouth. And it was one night and I was sitting there and uh, I turned to my good friend, Google, as I often do. And I just had this thought occur to me. And I was like, I wonder what Native American face painting look like. Like, are there any images of that in particular for the Mohawk tribe? So I literally did a Google search for Mohawk Native American face painting, I think is the term that I used. And this image popped up. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's what it is. It's war paint. So if you look at some of the traditional imagery of Native American war paint, you'll often see black across the eyes here. You'll sometimes see a hand over the mouth like that. Um, that can be sometimes associated with shamanism. But um, I was like, that's what it is. She's a warrior. And that's why she has those markings. And so from that, I I went in and, and worked on her face until she came to life. And I called her warrior for truth. And so um, I thought that was really interesting, that journey and how this imagery just came to me. So I wanted to share that story with you um, 
for a couple of different reasons. One, because it's her story and I know she wants her story to be shared and she's currently hanging in the Prine House in um, upstate New York in a show. And she'll be there for the end of uh, April. I think she comes down at the end of April. And then um, I'll have her out and available. She's on my website, too, if you want to take a look. And my social media, of course. But um, so, yeah, I know she wants to be seen and she wants her story shared. So that's one reason for, for sharing this with you today. The other is to encourage you to really connect with your pieces to connect with your paintings. And if you start to see imagery in there, there might be a story that wants to be told and that's okay. Um, and it's okay if it's not, it's your painting. You, you decide, you're the creator, you choose what gets shared and what doesn't. And maybe that story is just for you and that's okay too. But um, yeah, it can be really interesting to go with what you get and follow it through and see where it takes you. I have some really interesting paintings that were like one stroke and it, it's a thing, you know? Um, and so there, there's something that communicates through us sometimes as artists. And I think it's really cool and exciting and part of the magic of being a visual creator to allow those stories to flow through us. So thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Thanks for following along. I hope you have a wonderful day creating in whatever form that takes for you. And uh, keep listening for the stories that want to be told because they're there. Take care. Bye.